Hey guys, God bless. <clears throat> uh, the purpose of this study is to highlight some things that I've discovered during this high watch period that we're kind of in. And um, it's not meant for predictions or I'm not making assumptions, but I'm just trying to discover patterns and similarities um, as we're commanded to watch and to watch patiently. Um, I pray that this video is a blessing to you, not a distraction. Um, it's been over a long time period, basically since August, that the Lord has been revealing and kind of disclosing some of these things to me. Um, it wasn't given to me in a single event. <clears throat> My friend um, Tim Foster from Tim Foster 405 uh, has been a confidant with me uh, putting a lot of this together. Uh, the Lord shows him things and me things in kind of different ways, but always seeing pretty much eye to eye. Um, so I've included a lot of his work in, in the Google Drive uh, that you can review. And um, I'm just going to start off. We'll start off with that, actually. So Tim has really looked at Amos 8, as we both have. Um, for a long time, I thought this basket of ripened fruit was, you know, could have been May Day. Uh, even a basket of, like, candy, which fruit kind of would be a sweetener back then. I thought maybe Halloween. <laughs> So we're trying to pin this tail and see what this is. And we've looked at this every year as this comes around and we're just like, how does this not fit? And why are we, and maybe this is the time it's going to actually manifest. But again, the chapter that we're discussing is Amos 8, uh, behold a basket of, of ripened fruit, um, which of course sounds like some sort of how thanksgiving cornucopia and um i was actually actually reviewing some of what he did here and this is actually pretty interesting so the prophecy begins by amos showing a vision of a basket of ripened fruit and the lord says what do you see and he says i behold i see a basket of ripe fruit it appears to represent the first fruits of the harvest have already been taken and gathered up and put in a basket and that comes back to deuteronomy 26 2 and as i read that verse tonight i was like wow that's pretty interesting because it actually does say basket of fruit and it shall be that when the ark come to the land which the lord god has given thee for an inheritance to possess it and dwell therein okay that's heaven thou shalt take thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth all right first of all the fruit of the earth which thou shalt bring to the land of the lord god has given you heaven you shall put it in a basket, and it shall go into a place which the Lord thy God shall choose a place his name there. So we know this is, they're talking about Israel, but it's always about heaven is the, the deeper meaning here. Um, as I started looking at the word basket in the concordance, it goes back to a, a dog, um, which if you've seen some of my well earlier videos, the dog always represents the soul. So it's like he's collected these souls, these first fruit souls. Um, anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. Just a quick take on that. Um, so, and it goes back to fruit strong 7119, which is summer fruit, as you can see here, um, summer fruit. Okay. So kind of an interesting tie-in and um of course we have the whole thanksgiving basket of summer fruit removal of the first fruits believers that before catastrophic events are to follow okay um it seems to celebrate a holiday celebration over a sabbath weekend there's a strong incentive for the merchants to begin selling their products just after the holiday feast is over this appears to be pointing to traditional American Thanksgiving holiday gathering with a follow-on Black Friday. Now, Black Friday is kind of where I took the reins a little bit, and the Lord showed me some things with that. So we're going to talk about that mostly in this in this video. And uh, But he goes on here, and he gives you, you know, different things. Again, it's, it's all there for you to take in. Deuteronomy 26 is in there. Um, I know he quotes Isaiah as far as the dead bodies everywhere. Isaiah 525, those that call the good evil and the evil good. Um, and when, when the new moon, that's always a big one, always looking for this new moon, be over. It just so happens that Thanksgiving this year on the 23rd is a new moon. So <clears throat> we have some things to look at. If you want to go further, then totally up to you. Now, um, 
let's take a look at some stuff here on Black Friday. So, before the Lord took Israel out on eagles' wings, remember he always says that, I bared you on eagles' wings and took you out of the land of Egypt and removed your burdens, all right, out from underneath the burdens of Egypt. Okay, he did something for them, okay, that is highlighted in this study here. So, and the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed from the Egyptian jewels, silver, and gold, and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Now, this isn't like, hey, let me see your gold, and I'm going to give it back. When they crossed the Red Sea, they never came back to give that stuff back. So, there is, um, you know, it says borrowed, but this was never returned, okay? Um they spoiled the Egyptians. They took their gold. They took their treasures during their exodus. They walked out with it. Now, if we know the story of the birthing of Israel, then we know that these items did little to no good for them. Yeah, they built the golden calf, but that was one thing that they built. There's a deeper meaning here, okay? Um, they're out there in the desert looking for food or water. So these jewels of gold and raiment aren't going to be used to barter with anybody <clears throat> to establish any type of wealth or anything like that. But what happened here, and there's documented instances of that, uh, they had to rely on God for sustenance, manna, quail, uh, water, all that stuff. And they didn't interact with nations. So what became of these items of luxury? Well, this is what they used to build the tabernacle with. They built the house of the Lord to take with them. Okay. They built the tabernacle and all the workmanship that went into it, all the gold and smith, silver smithing and embroidery work and all of that stuff was used to build the house of the Lord. Okay. So they collected all that stuff. So I told you that to tell you this because in a dream um, I had, now it kind of makes sense. Um, so here's the dream. I was in my vehicle. Um, I was not alone, but I had help with me. The sky was very dark. Clouds were blackened. It was a very, very dreary day. Okay. Um, very black. Like my headlights could barely work. Okay. I go to a bank and with my help and I go to the counter and the man is tending the, that's tending the bank notices me. I come up to the counter like a normal customer. It's very busy, by the way. And he helps me out without much communication. He's like, he starts putting everything on the counter and he states to me, and I'll never forget this in the dream. He states to me, here's your $250,000 of Israeli gold, Mr. Jackson. Is there anything else I can help you with? And I didn't say much. I grabbed the bags of gold and I load them into my vehicle. I think there was a cart or something there to help me. And I remember kind of going outside like, golly, is this stuff safe, you know? Um, but I get in my vehicle and I drive away. And then there's just a sense of calm but an urgency to get to work. So what kind of work? I would say we're going to start rebuilding the proper house of the Lord. Right now, there is no remnant. Right now, there's only the churches and people on YouTube and doing these things. But... We're going to help, the remnant's going to help rebuild on the proper foundation, the house of the Lord. Okay, people. Okay. And to do that, these gifts, or however you want to call them, I guess, these treasures that are taken, are going to be given to God's people to help establish them. Whatever it is. I don't know if it's going to be orphanages or um you know people who need help medicines i don't know but there's going to be some sort of use for these to build the house of god okay that's what it's going to be used for so if you look at the history of black friday you'll discover an interesting parallel for centuries the adjective black has always been associated with calamities okay this is no different than the Panic of 1869, which occurred when the financiers Jay Gould and James Fisk took advantage of their connections in the Grant administration in an attempt to corner the gold market. Okay, He ordered the Treasury to release a large supply of gold, 
which halted the run and caused prices to drop by 18%. Fortunes were made and lost in a single day. Fortunes were made and lost in a single day. Does that make sense with what happened here? They took that stuff, they left Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea, their fortunes were lost in a single day. Single day. Buy gold. Same thing as I gained in my dream. Okay. Um, one thing I thought was just kind of interesting I made note of. They use black ink and red ink um, in their ledgers. Okay, black would show the positive amounts, red the negative, and the earliest known reference to the explanation of this occurred in the Philadelphia, like as in the Church of Philadelphia, Inquirer of November twenty eighth. This is an interesting date right here, November twenty eighth. November twenty eighth is the day Comet Ison hit the sun in two thousand thirteen. Okay, that date's coming up right after. Um, Black Friday. Okay, I think it's a Tuesday or somewhere right around there. Remi I, I want to try to remember. I'm asking you to remind me. I'll try to remember talking about this at the very end because it's a very important marker, I believe. Okay. Okay, so these funds are not for personal gain or profit. They're used for ex the expansion of the kingdom of God, the building of his kingdom, his people, his temples, where he is going to dwell. He no longer dwells in a tabernacle. Never did. However, this was necessary so that we could have an understanding that we are the temple. Okay, He's going to deliver us. So most of us know how Black Friday works. Mass shopping before Christmas. Insomuch that the complete story of Jesus Christ is lost and has become a celebration of self-indulgence to the highest degree. Am I, am I mistaken in that? I don't think I am. It's completely become commercial versus spiritual does this behavior of the shoppers seem demonic in nature now i've put about eight videos in a little folder on the google drive for you to look at of black friday instances okay i'll let you be the judge of that is it demonic in nature is this a manner of which we celebrate the father's only begotten son's sacrifice it is in it is no biblical mystery that buying and selling is the demonic tool for engulfing humanity into gaining the mark of the beast. Do you think that buying and selling would be paramount by the enemy? That we have to have these things. That we are spoiled, rotten little kids. Okay. If you read the letter of Pontius Pilate, okay. Now many doesn't many people don't know about Pontius Pilate some of the history with him because it's not taught but he wrote a letter okay after dealing with christ he wrote a letter it's a very touching letter now i'm not sure there are articles there are letters that talk about pontius pilate not only becoming a believer but a martyr as well and his final days of his life i believe this man is saved that's for you to decide to me it doesn't matter because the way he wrote his letters speaks volumes okay anyway you'll see a unique wording on how he describes not only the darkness of that day but also the mindset of humanity on good friday the day jesus was crucified so here's a couple little sentences from him often our civil commotions i have witnessed the furious anger of the multitude but nothing can be compared with what I witnessed on this occasion, it might have been truly said that all the phantoms of the infernal regions had assembled at Jerusalem. The crowd appeared not to walk, but to be borne off and whirled as a vortex, rolling along in living waves from portals of the Praetorium, even Mount Zion, with howling screams, shrieks, and vocaliferations, such as we have never heard in the sedations of the Pinoia, or the tumults of the forum. I might have said that wrong. Penania, Penoya, Penanoia. And this is just a screenshot from a video. 
that pretty much is right in line with what he said. He'd never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like this. It's ridiculous. History. History of Black Friday. It used to be that they would have these Santa parades. Okay, right after Thanksgiving. They'd have the appearance of Santa. The idea was Santa has arrived or Santa is just around the corner. Just who is Santa to you? Doesn't take much arranging of the letters to make this entity. Think about it. Think about it. That's all I'm going to tell you to do is think about that. Santa's just right around the corner. Santa has arrived. Does the movie Black Friday of 2021 give us a clue of what to expect? A parasite organism attacks All Mart employee Monty as he prepares the store for its Black Friday sale. Monty mutates into a monster and attacks two co-workers. Possessed by a parasite, a rabid shopper mauls Bitcher, causing him to transform into a creature too. Store manager Jonathan Wexler has his employees open the door. Shoppers pour in, but they gradually turn violent as the parasite mutation spreads. Everyone eventually realizes that the shoppers are transforming into murderous creatures as they attacked and are forced to fight back. Possessed by a parasite, Emmett emits a tentacle that kills Anita. Emmett turns into a creature before fleeing toward the store's Santa's Village display. Jeez, I wonder what they're talking about here. Maybe something to do with shots? I don't know. The 6th to the ninth hour is only mentioned in the Bible twice. Okay, Matthew 25 and also Matthew 27, 44. The wording's not an exact match. However, it's still interesting. And it's the only place where that timestamp is referenced. So we'll look at Matthew 27, 44. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same to the in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the land into the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lama Sethmani, to say is my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I believe that this and then they stood there and they thought he was calling to Elijah. I know that the Elijahs are the forerunners and have been equated as the remnant. So is this him calling forth the remnant? Could be. I don't know. But it's something to think about. Sixth to the ninth hour. From noon till 3 p.m. darkness was across the land. How is the earth going to go dark for three hours at all till 3 o'clock? So this is obviously the planetary system known as Nibiru or the dragon system in Revelation. Now, I can show you a video clip here, and um, it is from a lady, and her channel is called, um, actually got to look that up again, I had to call somebody to ask, give me just a second, so I apologize for that, her channel is called The Final Days, and what she does is she tracks these weather cams up in different places. I think Colorado, Alaska is another one. And she catches these glimpses of these planets in orbit, the same system that's shown right here. All right, most people know about this, so I'm not going to get too into it. But it's the Planet X system that's on like a slingshot orbit around the sun. Okay. She's probably got about 50 to 150 videos, and she captures these images. What's going to happen is one of these planets is going to get in front of the sun, and it's going to eclipse. Now, this is why you see all these chemtrails and everything else. Most, Like I said, most people know about this. Um, this is why you go to your sunset, when your sun is setting and where you live, this is why you'll be heavily chemtrailed at sunset, because it's going to show 
generally it's sunrise or sunset that that's most likely when these planets occur now they're in the infrared spectrum if you know anything about the infrared spectrum you know it's not visible to the naked eye that it's it's hard to see you need special equipment to see them but that's them moving through the system and again we're not going to go too in depth with this you should already hopefully be there by now but um nonetheless you can see these planets here these different weather cams they block a lot of them but she gains a lot of them before they get blocked and shows them and um, something you should pay definitely attention to but um, just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of that so it's not so um, so you have an understanding anyway okay so the word darkness up here in Matthew 27, interesting. Um, a night of darkness, darkened eyesight or blindness. Okay, this is why Jesus healed the blind, guys. All right, wants them to see, wants them to see and have understanding of what's going on. And ignorance respecting divine things and human duties. And the accompanying ungodliness and immorality together with their consequent misery in hell. Persons in whom darkness becomes visible and holds sway. Does that sound like what happened with Pontius Pilate with what he wrote? How the darkness took over these persons? Something like he had never seen before? This man that was not only a general in the military, but had ruled provinces and seen things and seen crowds and had to deal with crowds on a probably a daily basis for the most part persons in whom darkness becomes visible and holds sway reminds me of the reprobate mind verse where he turns him over to a reprobate mind lack of ignorance or ignorance respecting divine things and human duties I don't think that picture I showed you. Actually, let me just show you one real quick. Let's just look at one since we're doing this. So this is 2020 madness. Um, imagine this crowd at the crucifixion of Jesus where they're yelling, crucify him. And as Pontius Pilate described that it was almost like the tumults of hell were opened.
Zero self-control. Zero. Um, absolutely ridiculous. Darkness becomes visible and holds sway. Shadow, what we just talked about with the planet. Shadow caused by interception of light. An image cast by an object representing that form of that object. Pretty much looks like an eclipse to me. An image cast by an object and representing the form of that object. A sketch, outline... It's the same thing. It's what's going to happen up here. One of those planets is going to come into uh, in front of the sun. So I thought this was interesting. This is Matthew 20, the other place where 6 to 9 is mentioned, which we all know also is crossing over, right? Uh, we've done several videos on crossing over. Um, the parable goes out and he's talking about these laborers. He's going to the marketplace to look for laborers. Go you also to the vineyard wherever I give you. And they went away. And again, he went out to the sixth and the ninth hour. Now, it's not sixth and the ninth hour. It's not sixth to the ninth, but sixth and the ninth. But it's the only place in the Bible where this time reference is used. And he goes out and he pays these laborers. And they go um, and do work during the day. And he pays them. And I don't know. This kind of might be stretched. But I saw Marketplace and it just caught me. You know, back to that, you know, shopping type of mentality. Um, but anyway, I wanted to mention that. Here's our Amos 8 reference. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, which is the sixth hour. And I will darken the earth on a clear day. Okay. So here we have sixth hour the sun going down okay if we continue to examine amos 8 there are even more clues concerning the marketplace and buying and selling saying when will the new moon be gone that we may buy and sell that we may set forth wheat making epa small and shekel great uh and falsifying the balances by deceit 23rd November is that new moon. So when will this day be gone so that we can go and do these things again? So it's almost as if on this day, um, something happens so that good, you know, Black Friday is not happening. I don't know if that's true or not. We're going to look at a prophetic word here in a minute that may give us some clues. So Amos means um, to carry a burden. Okay, burdens. Um, and this was an interesting word given to um, Sparrow Barn about burdens concerning Amos and no moon in the Bible or no moon that night. Now, a new moon is black. Okay. Now, I'm going to pull this up and just kind of highlight this and go through a couple things here. So, in this. Um, she gives this word here and I generally don't read her words a lot, but this one stuck out to me in the first place she goes. It's kind of funny because during this time, we, as you watched in my previous video, hopefully that on the last day of the feast of tabernacles is that great day. Well, she goes to a flea market talking about booths and going to all these different booths. So that was the one of the first thing that caught my mind. So let me do a quick search here. Yeah, booth. All these different booths. She gets different things. Okay. So then this continues. I'm not going to read this verbatim. Again, it's included. And she gets to this moon or no moon. Now, there was no moon, so she's talking about this this dream. The hour is very late. She asked the Lord, are we at the great year of our Lord? Which, remember, if you remember, it's a circuit, right? So it starts on that last great day. So are we at the gate of the year of our Lord? So in other words, have we completed that circuit and at that ending gate? And Jesus replies, it's very late. <laughs> kind of like it's, you know, it's very late. Not going to tell you, but it's late. So she says, like, 
the words make me think very late, you know, so it goes on and um, she approaches this gate of iron and it's got oil and sludge. It's nasty. And then there's another beautiful gate. So she's got a choice basically in front of her beautiful gate or bad gate. And she's like, there's no moon and there's only stars to illuminate my path. And I could hear distant thunder approaching. And I realized that it wasn't thunder. Instead, it was a battle approaching. And I knew the beautiful gate had been put there for my escape. And she says, please open this gate. I want to go uh, to this place and move onward. As hours passed, she sat there in darkness and it became lighter and dawn approached and prayed. Thank you, Lord, for breaking the morning. And she's basically in heaven. Now I heard the birds instead of battles. Um, uh, the beautiful gate was now open and I bolted toward the gate at first. And then I suddenly was short of stepping through. While I was excited to leave, I was in, I began to cry. Oh Lord, my heart is breaking for those left in behind me in battle. I cannot step through. So she's having this dilemma. Um, while alongside these gates, you prepared us for um, in my heart to do this. Will you please prosper me here on earth that I might continue the good fight? Prosper, right? Remember the money? Remember the gold? I want to help those that are lost. So I backed up from the beautiful gate and I made my decision. Be with me, Lord. Fill me with your strength. Heal me for your glory. I pray this in your name, Jesus name. And I ran back towards the sound of the battle. As I ran, I felt strong and healed. I knew that he would use me in a mighty way. I had no fear. And so it goes on here. I'm trying to think of the part here. But basically, she's healed. She's got several ailments, so she's healed and goes back to the fight. Um, but you can kind of go through this. There's a certain part I want to find, but... Oh, here it is. You'll bring news to the poor. You'll bind up the brokenhearted. You'll proclaim liberty to the captives. You'll open the prison cells to those who are bound. So, anyway, that word's included in there as well. So new moon is H2320, which also means to renew, prepare, renew and make and repair, just like she talked about being healed and hot and prospered. And then, of course, this goes back to Feast of Tabernacles, dwelling. Zachary 9 was interesting. Um, I went there. And so Zechariah 9 is the only place this is mentioned. If you look at Zechariah 9, it uh, the burden of the word came to Hadrash, which is part of Damascus. It's part of the Damascus area. Shall be, cut, shall be the rest thereof. When the eyes of man, as all the tribes of Israel, shall, shall be towards the Lord. In other words, something's going to happen so powerful. Isaiah 17, perhaps. There's our 17 again. You know, our 17 and 23. Um, anyway. Shall be toward the eyes of the Lord. And it kind of goes on to these different uh, cities and continues. Gaza shall see it be very sorrowful. Sorrowful. Eshkelon. Uh, and it goes on. But what's interesting down here is this is the place where I filled my bow with Ephraim. All right. These are the, the arrows that are shot forth and um, raised my sons. And the arrows shall go forth as lightning. So these are the arrows being sent back out after they've been gathered, which would be the fruits. Okay. Also with this, you also have a new moon reference in 2 Samuel, which talks about three arrows. So there's so much to this, but uh, definitely something to look at. Now, the only places the new moon is mentioned, and I've reviewed this before, Psalm 81, blow the trumpet in the new moon, the appointed time, solemn feast day. And I thought this was interesting. I moved his shoulder from the burden, and his hands are delivered from the pots. So it goes along with Amos again, with Amos meaning burden. And then, of course, we have the good man. He's been on a long journey, and he's got a bag of money with him. So there's our gold reference and our quote-unquote treasure reference. And I will come at the day appointed, which goes back to Psalm 81.3, the appointed time. So interesting, guys. Um, again, not making predictions, but 
you know it appears that things are uh, looking that way so but god bless take care have a uh, good week